The following program is intended for mature audiences. The time is now for the hardest hitting, yet completely trivial, football show on the planet. You are in rarefied territory. Ladies and gentlemen, well, well to the broken helmet. Let's rock. Hey, coming to you live on tape on this Sunday, January 30th, 2022. It is the conference championship weekend. Yes, we have arrived at what many always say is the best weekend of football. However, it's going to be very difficult to top what everybody saw last week which was nothing short of spectacular football weekend. Very worthy of applause and praise. Now, I don't know if I necessarily liked all the football games, but the results and the endings were all spectacular. So we are two brothers in attendance today. I should say we are. We we are NH. Highlands, what's up? Um... Eggy Brothers in attendance today. Chris, hailing from Parts Unknown, but now residing in Delray Beach, Florida. Is it Delray, right? Boynton Beach. Boy- Boynton Beach, Florida. And I am up north in freezing cold Hohokus, where New Jersey, where we didn't get pounded by the storm that was anywhere going to produce one inch to one foot of snow, and we ultimately probably got around like four or five inches. It was cold as hell, though. Uh, But everybody fired up their snowblowers, gave them something to do for a hot second. Other places got destroyed, but you don't know anything about that shit, because down in Florida, you just sit in the sun and tan. Well, I got to 37 last night. Whoa! What happened there? Is everybody talking about the orange crops dying off? No, they're talking about the iguanas falling out of trees. Oh, I did hear that. Somebody was just talking about that. I think, I think maybe my in-laws had called uh, from. They also hail from Florida, and they were talking about that because then I heard uh, I heard my son Anthony talking to my wife about iguanas falling out of trees. Is that yes. a thing? I, I mean, yeah, you're. Yeah, you're supposed to bring them inside till they thaw out, and then there's other people who are like, you're supposed to kill them because they. It's not illegal to kill iguanas down here anymore, I guess, because they're killing There's off. so many of them? There's so many, and they're just killing off. They're a nuisance, and they're causing more bad than good, but uh, who knows? I, I mean, Florida, honestly, Florida... It's about to get all stupid up in here! ...has crazy so shit stupid. that happens. Crazy shit that happens. <laughs> like, the, the snakes that got released that uh, have basically taken over you know, the swamplands... Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and, you know, you're waiting for anaconda in real life to happen. Right. Where all of a sudden, you know, some person just gets eaten by some gigantic uh, colossal anaconda. And then it was the algae blooms that were killing everything off. Uh, you know, and now, now whatever. Iguanas are killing well, everything. Yeah. The, the algae bloom is still very, very real and crazy. Um, but the, the snake thing I haven't heard about in a couple of years. But. <laughs> As soon as the snake thing went on, I can't even tell you how many friends were like, let's let's go down to the Everglades and let's just start killing some snakes. Yeah. It was like, what? Like, what? Florida like, just that's what you- crazy ass stories. And I remember the snake yeah, thing, right? Everybody bought them as pets and then they released them into the wild. And then, you know, they just ended up breeding and taking over. And now there's snake infestations everywhere in the Florida swamplands. It's killing off all the indigenous life. Blah, yeah. blah, 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 yeah. blah. Yeah, I do remember the beauty of Florida. But last time there was something cold like that, I remember everybody's worried about the orange crops freezing up. But I don't know timing wise if they they're doing all. It was it was literally so short. I mean, it maybe was in the 30s for four hours. Yeah. Well. All right. Enough weather talk. We sound like our fucking father. So, uh, you know, let, let's just uh, we'll hop right into it here. We'll take a a quick look back at the fantastic weekend that was. First down. First down. So, Chris, as I mentioned, the weekend that was thoughts on a fantastic four games that uh, took over last weekend. So, 
I texted you after the Buffalo game. That was probably one of the greatest games I can remember since I was a kid. I mean, that was like that was like one of those things that you see in almost college football, right? Where it's like score, go up, score. Go a little up, ridiculous, score. right? But but it was a little ridiculous. I I'm, I don't want to get too snooty here and be like football purist to the nth degree. But I mean. There was just no defense being played, and a bunch of yeah, but who can, terrible but, but decisions. Who can, it was Nobody, it was terrible. I'm, I'm but, not saying I care. I'm not saying I care. It was fantastic to watch. Super exciting. The way you want to end, a, you know, a divisional weekend for sure. All I'm saying is that at some point I was sitting there being like, can somebody play defense? Can like don't go into prevent. Don't give them 15, 20 yards of cushion. Like just play a little bit more defense. Squib, yeah, the, squib made, the kick, squib the kick, and don't give them uh, the ability to tee off on on the uh, on the kickoff after the score. I, I, you know, there was just a lot of stuff. I was just shaking my head. So, at. but if we're gonna talk about those two things, then we need to talk about the the opposite sides of those arguments. The squib kick, fine, like that 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 can definitely be an argument. But at the same time, still they can they can catch the ball on a squib kick and just go right to the ground. And give themselves up. Maybe it's a second. Maybe it's two seconds. But I understand the thought process of squib kick. Maybe it's safe. Maybe it knocks two seconds off the clock. Fine. The other part of it is everybody's talking about don't play prevent defense. But Buffalo was still winning that game by three points at the end there. So maybe they didn't need to give 25 yards of cushion. But... At the same time, it's not like they can play press man against a team like Kansas City who has numerous guys that will burn you over the top and then you lose. I, okay, fine, but you're talking about a Buffalo team that ranked number one in defense. DVOA, I always use it, I get it. Number one yes. against the pass. Number one against the pass, number one overall. You know, like, I understand that you don't want to get toasted. But you also don't – those first two plays, right, it was uh, – who got the first reception? The second one was the Kelsey that got him in the field goal range. But I but, forget the – who got the first one? Was it the running back? Oh, I don't remember. I don't remember. I just watched this game this week again, and I don't remember. But was, anyway, Kelsey got short. the second one. Yeah, it was short, but it, was, it wasn't It was short. I mean, you know, what was it? Wasn't it yards, Edwards Hilaire? Yards? It might have been whoever it was, but I mean, both of those were like, "Come on, guys, play some defense." And the Kelsey one, it was like, "How much cushion are you going to give him?" I just don't, you know, you're not going to get toasted, but at least give a little bit of of pressure short of twenty yards or north of twenty yards. I mean, it's just it really was so you, head scratching. You saw the um, hold on, I'm looking it up. It was to Hill, and the first oh, the first play. What? No, 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 that can't be right. Hold on. Bucker, Mahomes pass short middle to Kelsey to Buffalo 31 for 25 yards. That was the one that got him in the field goal range. There was one before that. Right? There was Tyree, one. Ty, there Tyree was one. Kill? I don't know. There was two plays, right? There was the kickoff, yeah. and then there Tyree, was... Tyree Kill. Tyree so, Kill. So, anyway, a point being, um, you know, I, I it was a very exciting game. Uh, I was very into it. I just, at the end there, I, everything just started falling apart. And I said, ah, th- this is the crap that I hate. You know, I, I would have rather have seen, uh, you know, something that, um, I, I, an ending that wasn't predicated by, you know, a, a stupid, you know, non-squib kick, depending on how you see uh, that, what they should have done there. And then defense that just gave them yardage and then it just came to backfire. Him. But, and then you everybody talked the about press the, confer- what the press conference. What press conference? No, I did not. With with Mahomes and Kelsey when they were talking about how they organized that last play, no, and Kelsey I didn't see, just I, I didn't watch any Kel- post games. Kelsey said, uh, "I just told uh, I just told Patrick or whatever he calls Mahomes. Uh, I just told him I'm just going to ton of it. So yeah, and so that's what he did. And so you they then they show the video uh, of green grass to just go run and." allow Kelsey to find open space, which is exactly what he did. So, yeah. uh, you know, and then everybody talked about the overtime. I, you know, look, I don't really care that much about the overtime. I do think it's insanely stupid b- because the rules are arbitrary, utterly. You know, if you score a touchdown on the first drive, game over. Uh, you know, if you 
score a field goal, the other team gets a chance. If the other team scores a touchdown, then it's over. And then it's the first one to score. And, I, you know, just do a period, a 15-minute quarter, and just let everybody play. Right? Like, give both teams the chance to touch the ball. And then once the one team doesn't score, that's it. That's game. Right? I mean, why is that so hard to do? What if the what if happens to have the ball for all 15 minutes? Uh, well, so... I don't. I don't even know what you mean. I, number one, that would be an insanely crazy drive. But yeah, it'd be insane. It'd be absolutely insane. But but you understand my point. Like, what what if they use up all the clock? Uh, I don't. I don't know. That that's not a risk for me. I, look, you do a fifteen minute quarter. Just follow me. You do a fifteen minute quarter, and then you just play it out where each team always has the chance to touch the ball. So yeah. Team one gets the ball. Team two will get it on offense, regardless of the outcome of the score, right? Team two then has to either match or better the other team. And if they better them, that's game. And then you just keep doing that back and forth, right? And that, that's, but then there's, but then there, it's got to be able to end in a tie, though. If, 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 it, if it ends in a tie, one, some way, shape, or form, right, then you just do another quarter. Yeah, gotcha. so, injury, injury so just factor goes time. up. What? So, oh, you're just talking about playoff football, not not as a as a whole throughout the whole season. No, 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 no. I I mean, look, you could, you could. I mean, if you do it for the playoffs, you should do it for everything. But number one, there's not that many overtime games, right? And when there is an overtime game, they, it's not like they ever push a second overtime. It just doesn't happen. So just. Do a 15-minute quarter and allow everybody to touch the ball. And ultimately, what's going to happen is somebody's going to miss out. Somebody's going to miss out. They're going to get. They're not going to get the field goal, or you know, there's going to get an interception or a turnover, or some scores. You know, you're going to need a touchdown. Now, I've heard all the the data analytics about what an what an advantage the team that touches the ball first has when you do that approach. Or the team that touches the ball second has such an advantage when you do that. Because the second team knows whether or not they need a touchdown or a field goal. Where the first team doesn't. Right? And it's just kind of like, alright, well, tough shit. Right? The, the other option you have is an ending like we got where it's a touchdown and it's over and the other team didn't touch the ball. Again. Yeah. Okay. I don't Chris think, is not feeling I don't think that passionate gonna, about I don't that. Think <laughs> We've come to a crash, so okay. Enough of overtime, then. We we can hop on. Any, any other thoughts on any of the other games? I'll give you. No, one. I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I was. I was segueing into my opinion about your stupid statement. I don't <laughs> agree. Okay. I don't agree in any way, shape, and form that what they have set in place is incorrect. They have to go 75 yards to score a touchdown 99 percent of the time. That's a long way to go. That's a really long way to go after playing four quarters. So if a team does that first, why doesn't that why, – why don't you deserve the right to, to claim victor in that game? Well, that's the exact argument that everybody that you know gives a thumbs up to the current overtime rules gives. And because my argument would be – how do you know that the other team's defense isn't as shitty? So, if B- Buffalo's defense sucks, they let them march down the field, they get a touchdown. Okay, how do we not know that the Chiefs' defense also doesn't suck and is going to let Allen move all the way downfield and score a touchdown too? You have no clue. And so you've just bailed out Kansas City's defense because they don't have to go on the field and prove anything. All you do is you look at Buffalo's defense and you say, those guys blew it. They couldn't stop them from getting a touchdown. Game over. Okay, yeah, it's it's Pat Mahomes. It, it's a tough thing to do sometimes. But Allen was lighting the place up, and Kansas City's defense couldn't stop him either. But we'll never know because they just arbitrarily ended the game and said, no, that's good enough. That's all we need. Game over. You know what I mean? That That's my argument. That's my argument against it, is that you're bailing out the other team's defense and not having them step up to the plate and prove that they can actually do 
what you're penalizing the other team's defense for doing. Well, you said not too long ago during this conversation that why don't you just play a little better defense to both sides of the football? But my argument would be why didn't Buffalo step up and put a different scheme in? They just let Kansas City go all the way down the field again. Yeah, I understand, and I agree. Their defense didn't perform. My contra-argument is simply I want to see Kansas City's defense also either perform or not perform. And that's it's just arbitrary that you end the game after a first touchdown and basically say, well, you're de- that defensive team X – in this case, the Bills, couldn't hold water, and so the game's over because they let up a touchdown. And then everybody well, yeah, goes, the oh, only... play all three, th- all three phases of the game. Special teams, offense, defense. I, You know, I get it. I get it. Yes. Yeah, that's what everyone's going to say. <laughs> yeah, they say exactly. it all the time. It, it, it's the same thing. Yeah. You but know. Uh, you know, what, what the only other option would be to, to do what college does, where you start from the 25-yard line. Well, you know, I... I don't want to do that either because that's kind of silly because it takes out special teams altogether. All I'm saying is just do another quarter and ensure that the second team has a chance to touch the ball, regardless of the outcome of the first drive. And then it's just the first one to score and the other team doesn't match or better. It'll, it would work out. There would be no issues with it at all because – Buffalo's defense offense would have gotten out there. They either would have scored a touchdown or that would have been the game. And, and the coin flip to, to coin flip only determines who gets the ball first. Yeah. And, and I, I mean, that does that put that team at an advantage? I mean, I guess a little bit unless their defense is able to stop them. Right. I mean, turnovers could happen. Anything could happen. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, you're talking about direction. Shouldn't they each get a chance to play in both directions? I mean, you could argue this yeah. until, you're, until you're blue in the face. No, I, I, I get it. There are you know other arguments to be made why that format doesn't work. But I think if you were to measure everything and weigh it all against each other, you got to come up with something better than uh, what they have now because the, the way they changed it doesn't kill the problem – people had with it the first time which was one team doesn't get to touch the ball and so the current nobody format, nobody would care about this if it wasn't a playoff game yeah but that's the point that's the point that's the point the playoff game puts emphasis on the overtime format and puts it under the microscope and when you test it what you get is bad results by any chance, do you have the statistics of how many games ended in a touchdown in overtime this year? No, I have no clue. I have no clue. I, I for, saw so many numbers. Touchdown. I saw so many numbers after the overtime came through from data analytics, uh, Twitter, that I, I just couldn't do it anymore. I saw all the arguments against the current overtime format, the arguments for it. I saw all kinds of numbers. So, no, I didn't know. I, I don't know how many overtime games ended in a touchdown. I imagine I, not that that not that many. No, it can't be. Okay. If that, if that if that many did, because I think they would have changed it immediately. Well, they, they already put this change in place, right? What, four or five years ago? Yeah, I don't remember when they changed it. I, I don't remember. But, but they changed it specifically if, to get rid of this result, and this result just happened. Yeah, yeah. The field, well, they, got, they changed it to get rid of the field goal, ending in a field goal result, where first – Team gets it. They kick a field goal. They win. Whatever. Are you taking a drink of a water? Yeah. Yeah. I thought so. I just heard all this, all this ice crackling hitting a glass, and I said, I think he's taking a big swig. Oh, uh, that's that's. I got the headphone speaker going, not the not the Yeti mic. Oh, I got you. I got you. I got you. Okay. Well, I mean. I- <laughs> We just went 20 minutes on overtime a, a week after the game. I didn't expect that at all. So uh, let, let's 
you know, hop off of that. Is there anything you want to touch on on the other games? I will say that uh, Tennessee should have won that game. Green Bay should have won their game. And the Tampa Bay game wasn't a game at all. I, it ended up being very close because the Rams basically did everything possible to give that game back. But that game was over way early. And the fact that it even became a game um, is crazy to me. But I, I, I think all the results after watching the game a second time should be completely different. That's how I thought about everything. Yeah. Well, was this the first time ever? Is that what I saw the first time ever all four games ended in a walk-off score? It very well it's could be. the first be. time it's, Again. A, it's ever happened in, you know, whatever, which I thought was very interesting and which makes for great TV. I, it was fantastic. I, I don't know. I'm sure that that was one of the data points that got thrown out after the game. I again, I had to stop following Twitter because I just couldn't take all the numbers and everybody talking about it. Greatest day, you know. It, it's as though the world should have stopped after the final game on Sunday because it just couldn't get any better than that. Uh, and it was a great, great weekend of football. Don't get me wrong, but uh, you know, the exaggeration uh, of the NFL fan response was really off the charts. I will say that. Last weekend was a return to form. So two weeks ago, we got all favorites, right? And then last weekend, what happened? I, we've talked about it all year. Dogs, when you like them, you should just bet them to win. And what happened last week? Three dog wins and one favorite. That's what ended up happening. Yeah, and it should have been four. Uh, it should have been four, you know, whatever. I guess, yeah. It could have been three dog, four dog wins. Three yeah. dog night. Um but that's not. But I think everyone's reaction to this was was based off of the fact that I think a lot of it had to do, and it's crazy to talk about, but the pandemic and and how different football was last, you know, a year ago and two years ago, and and what it's like now, and what and what it's come to, and I think it was good for the fan bases. I think it was good to see. Oh, it was fantastic. The Super Bowl. Don't get me wrong. I think it was good to see the Super Bowl champion lose. I think it was it was good to see. Uh, a, a, a conference championship without Aaron Rodgers, without Tom Brady, you know, like that's that that hasn't happened. And that was another thing Schefter yep, threw out. I saw that it's the fir- first one in twelve years that didn't that didn't have Brady or Rodgers in it. That's crazy. Yeah, but football, the NFL, is all about quarterbacks, and that's why it is that stat exists. Because the best quarterbacks usually get their team the farthest in the playoffs. I mean, that, that's just historically that's always been the case. And you're talking about two of the best quarterbacks ever. And I, you know, Brady probably are. You know, I, I don't know. Is there anybody that's ever been better than him? I mean, the guy's got seven rings, been to ten Super Bowls. I mean, it's pretty insane. Did you see the other stat, which I thought was fun? I might have sent it to you, but. Tom Brady had more of a chance of taking his team to the conference championship game than he did of completing a pass. Wait, repeat that? Oh, boy. Okay. Tom Brady had a greater chance of taking his team to the conference championship game than he did of completing a pass. Because, oh, if you break it down based off of years and, and conference championships, yes, gotcha. Right, yeah. So I think it was 65% chance of going to a conference championship game and his career completion percentage was 64. So he had a greater <laughs> chance of taking his team to the conference championship game. Than that's that's a funny stat. I mean, it's 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 cute how data, data analytics and, and uh, researchers do fun little things like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> that's that's not it's not real, but yeah, I, I get the point. I and he that. didn't he didn't play a bad game in that conference championship either. But he, uh, the defense just didn't show, and uh, the game plan they had going into that game was just horrific to run the ball, you know, so early. And the Rams just came out and passed it. They were just like, "Fuck it, we're just going through the air, and we're going to chop up your defense." And the defense had no answers at all. I'm surprised you didn't start this podcast off with, and that's the end of an era. Well, I okay. So here we go. Let's uh, let, let's switch it up. Tom Brady, great career. I don't actually think it's over quite yet. I, I have a little trepidation talking about it right now because there's something about this that smells a little funky to me. 
I mean, ESPN has stated Schefter's reputation on it, right? And they have gone back and said, no, this is happening. We know it for a fact. You know, it doesn't matter the denials that are coming out. But the denials, like the the non-confirmation that's come out of the one side, I, it, it's a little strong. Where, where are you hearing that? Where are the, the denials from? Uh, his... His agent, Yi said that only Tom can make that decision and he'll let everybody know once he makes a decision. Brady's father has said that's categorically false, that it's it, he is not retiring or the decision hasn't been made. And the Buccaneers, I believe, had said that they were not informed yet of Brady's decision. Oh, I, I, I didn't read any news. I was actually at the fair yesterday when that all started coming through, and I didn't follow up with it last night. Well, so I, Florio, I don't know. I, I mean, it had been kind of – it came Fuck out of – Florio. I, 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 you know, I agree. Fuck Florio. But uh, he was one of the lead people that like a week ago all of a sudden was like, he's going to retire. He's going to retire. He's going to retire. Right, and he pointed toward a bunch of stuff, you know, and it was him saying he didn't want a send-off party, um, blah, 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 blah. And so you started reading it everywhere. But then nobody really knew, and then all of a sudden all these, you know, NFL insiders had to run and, and present their information. Lock and Fora said, there's a, a, a decision's coming immediately. It's coming in the next couple of days. And then there's this person and that person. And then finally Schefter stepped up to the plate. Him and Ian Rappaport both said, Brady's retiring. And it was like they ran to the internet to post it so fast. There was nothing more to the story. They posted the headline. And then if you clicked on it to read the story, there was no story behind it. It was just Tom Brady's retiring. So whatever info they got was like super hot. And they wanted to run to the press before anybody else got got beat him to the punch. And so that that's how it went down. And so all of a sudden, then everybody else is trying to confirm it, and websites aren't posting it. And then after a little while, all of a sudden, it's on Fox News, it's on CNN, it's on every single news station there is. And as soon as it hit all the news, the news sites, then all of a sudden, you started getting the pushback, where people saying like, yeah, you know, it didn't really happen. And I, I think that one of the lead things that got everything going, I, I don't know if the Post reported it or the Post took somebody else's story and credited them. I, I, I just remember I read it in the Post, was Brady's uh, right-hand man was asking other quarterbacks around the league if they needed any kind of help. So Brady's had this guy who's basically been his handler, if you will, for his entire career. And the handlers started asking other quarterbacks and their agents if they needed any help. And so all of a sudden, people were like, okay, there it is. There's, you know, obviously that's a, a little nugget that is going to help validate that he's retiring. And then Schefter and them went on it. And so now there's been pushback. I, I haven't checked today. Uh, you know, right now it's about 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I haven't checked recently, <clears throat> but. Whatever. If he did retire, if he did retire, I mean, I mean, he's played twenty two years. How There's long? a lot of interesting articles right now about this. How how long are you going to play? You played twenty two years, dude. I, I will say, he has been in the Super Bowl, what four of the past five years, not including this one. So it's not like he wasn't performing at a top level. So part of me is a little pissed. Because I just like good football, and he's a great quarterback, and it's not like next year he's going to suck. So if you're playing at such a high level, I, you know why are you going to retire? Keep going, man. People would die to be in that position, to have that kind of talent and be able to perform at that level. And if you could still do it, why are you going to hang it up? All you hear about is all these professional athletes that are like, oh, I'd do anything to play one more, one more year, one more game. Okay, so... I'm going to stop you for a second. Do you like basketball? Do you like good basketball? I did. Not anymore. Okay. Why not? Why? What? So you you probably because what I'm the game, getting at the game's boring. I the, the three okay. points. So what? I, what I'm era, trying to get I, I'm not a is, fan. So what I'm trying to get to is: Do you think LeBron James is the, is the same category as the Tom Brady is? Okay, uh, LeBron. All right. So LeBron's game, I have never really enjoyed watching um I, it's just not been for me uh it's pretty 
amazing the length of his career and the performance throughout the years. Very much same as Brady. Um, if, if LeBron hung it up this year, I'd probably feel the same. I'd been like, well, why do you you're playing at a, a big time level? You know, you got nothing left. But I, it's also kind of I really hate LeBron James, so I wouldn't care that much. But for the sake of this argument, yes. I would feel the same. I would love to see LeBron out because I'm so tired of LeBron. But, I mean, you're the greatest, one of the greatest of all time. You know, keep playing. Like, I loved watching Jordan his final years at the Wizards because it was great to see him try to reinvent himself when he didn't have his hops and his athleticism anymore. But when he hung it up, it was like, yeah, he's done. <laughs> he's, he's fucking finished. Yeah, there's nothing more that he can do. Right? He tried it. It was fun to watch, you know, to see... You know, Jordan tried to overcome his lack of athletic ability in his older years to try to be something on the court. Uh, you know, LeBron's not there. Well, I think, I think many people are, <clears throat> excuse me, I think many people are tired of Tom Brady like you're tired of watching LeBron James. People hate Tom Brady as much as you hate LeBron James. Yes, I agree. I agree. I my argument about Tom Brady is that even if you hate him or you love him, I, the NFL is a better product with him in it. It just is, right? Because you you can't help but marvel at the shit that he does, even if you hate him, even if you hate him, right? And I guess you could say the same about LeBron, whatever. But I mean, the 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 quarterback position in the NF in the NFL holds more importance than any other position in, in all the sports, in my opinion. Because without the quarterback, it's damn near impossible to really put a good product on the field. You can try to come up with it, but ultimately the good quarterbacks went out. It just is. It's just the way that the sport, you know, is played and it's become. Um, and so, you know, I, to take Brady out of it arbitrarily just because he wants to retire, you know, it angers me a little bit. But who the hell am I? The guy's 45 years old. It's time to, it, sometimes it's just time to go. I get it. What do you type? I'm trying. I, I, I'm, ty- I'm, try- I'm looking up Super Bowl champions. This is how you get I wanna, car crashes I argue. on podcasts. I want to argue. What? <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. What do you What do you want to argue? I'll give you time, and I'll, I'll, I'll vamp for more. Uh, quarterback. You know, that the quarterback's going to lead to the, the championship every single time. I, I mean, go through the conference championship history, and you'll see I, it, it's always good quarterbacks. It never isn't. The NFL is a league of quarterbacks. That's what it is. Nick Nick Foles. <laughs> uh, oh my God! Yeah, this is this is the kind of argument you're going to try to present is grabbing the outliers and argue the outliers. Get out! No, of here. I'm looking. I'm looking through it now. You're right. You're the the way that you said, uh, our, Eli Manning arguably is good. He's good. Yeah, yeah. Not great, but good. Yeah, he's good. Breeze, Roethlisberger in his prime, Eli Manning. Yeah. The, the teams that, that win the championship definitely have that piece together. I mean, I guess you could argue the Baltimore Ravens were the last team. Nick Foles, but the Bal- I, 2000 ba- Baltimore Ravens was the last time that I mean, God, didn't, a it, defense wins. Talk, talk about an individual who has gotten decades more discussion than ever is warranted. Trent Dilfer's name should not be talked about. 20 years after the fact. I mean, he just shouldn't. But everybody always talks about him, and it's funny because they only talk about him in one regard, and that's like, oh, yeah, that was the shittiest quarterback that ever went to a Super Bowl, right? And then they're always like, well, you could win a Super Bowl because remember Trent Dilfer. I mean, otherwise, I, I, I'm i trying to think of other, other completely mediocre to bad quarterbacks that we still talk about today. None well, of them. What I, I think Trent the Dilfer. better... I think the better discussion to have would be how many – what year is the average quarterback in into their career winning a championship? You know, like uh, Kurt Warner with the Rams, was that 99? Kurt Warner with the Rams was – well, yeah, yeah, for a couple, nine. right? Because they, they won right. in 99, they went back, and then that was uh, Spygate. 
That was 2000. That was after the Twin Towers uh, crashed down, right? And uh, who was it? 2002. U2. Yeah, 2001. Right, U2 did the halftime show and the flag and the Patriots won and then it ended up being Spygate. So that was the Rams those two years. Uh, what was the well, point? The Ravens, of- the Ravens, Giants were in between there one year. Uh, yeah, well, the uh, – oh, was there a year in between? So yeah. it was it was the Rams yeah. it was the Rams then it was the Ravens Giants which was a disaster of a Super Bowl and then it was, it was horrible it was back to uh, Pat's Rams Pat's Rams right yeah so yeah. so you're you're talking Warner was a couple years in I mean going back here I you know it's it's rare it does take quarterback is the position but it from what I'm looking at here it takes a little time for those quarterbacks. So it's such a, you know, we're talking about quarterbacks that are coming out like a Joe Burrow, a Justin Herbert, a Kyler Murray, um, uh, uh, who's the guy, uh, Trevor Lawrence. These guys, like these guys, are going to take time to develop. So having a Joe Burrow in the in the semifinals already in the second year, that's really it's impressive. How long did it take Mahomes to get there? Two years? Well, whatever. He got drafted, and then he rode the pine. And then they put him in, and then didn't they go to the, right? And then yeah, and then he went to four straight conference championship games, right? Yeah, uh, one, two, three, and then the Rams this is the fourth because the Pats beat them. They yeah. they went they went last year. They went to the Super Bowl. They lost the year before that. They went to the Super Bowl and won. Yep. The year before that, they went to they lost to the Patriots in the conference championship game. That was the uh, D Ford uh, lining up offsides conference championship. Oh game. my God, that was you're right, right, right. or else they because they had it won. They had it won, yeah. And D Ford lined up offsides. Oh my God, oh, that's right. I forgot about that game. And the year before that, I don't think he played because it was Alex Smith. Uh, yeah, Eagles, Patriots in the Super Bowl that year. Yeah. So it was his second year, his first full year? First full, yeah, right. First playing year. Yeah. Yeah, so it's, you know, it's really tough drafting a quarterback because it's very – I has there ever been a rookie quarterback to take their team to the Super Bowl? Oh, that I don't know, but I don't think so. I, you know, my, my football goes back to the mid to early 80s. And How long did it take Aikman? A couple of years. They they were terrible when he first started. You know, I mean, they, they got Aikman after their were they one and fifteen or were they zero and sixteen? I yeah, they were terrible. And then they came in with Jimmy and and what it Young Steve Young rolled the road. Nah, the pine Steve Young Joe. was all Steve Young was all over the place too. Remember, Steve Young was USFL and then he came into the league, so he wasn't a rookie. Uh, Peyton Manning, he was terrible as a rookie. Like I know, court, rookie quarterbacks don't go. I I can't remember any that have ever gone to the Super Bowl. Th- this is going to be a transitional period. I I I know what you're driving at here, and I, like without Aaron Rod, let's say Aaron Rodgers retired at, in the offseason too, right? You lose Brady, Rodgers, and Roethlisberger, and this league would be short. Like all of their all, all of their elders, right? Well, well, you could go back to you could go back to last year too. You lost Manning, Rivers. You lost right. Roethlisberger, Brady, Rogers. All the seniority has just vacated the league, and the league kind of needs these younger quarterbacks to step up and play well now, right? I mean, if yeah. if yeah. Dable goes to the Giants and 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 they also pull the offensive coordinator or the the quarterbacks coach what they're talking about to to run the offense if they lose those two people and Allen regresses and all of a sudden Josh Allen stinks you know or is the quarterback he was his rookie year then i mean the league's kind of in trouble he's that's not going to happen I, I'm that's just, not going to happen i'm just saying i'm just saying like they need these these quarterbacks to perform and and keep performing Right, if all of a sudden you know Josh Allen was a flash in the pan, that like that's a huge hit to the league, you know. And Rodgers isn't going to be around much longer, so he's going to be gone. And then you're looking at the Burrows and the Herberts, 
and Mahomes. I mean, once Rodgers punches out, it's Mahomes' league. Who? Uh, yeah, you're right. It's Mahomes, is, and he's set for a while. I mean, right now, yeah. I mean, I, ultimately, look, something's going to break. Kelsey's going to Kelsey's going to fall off, or he's going to retire. I mean, Kelsey's not a you know a young dude. He's the same age as Gronk. Yeah, he but just, I read I read a I read a really good article uh, two nights ago about how giving him that ten year contract it was a genius move. Number one. Number two, not for him. It is no for Kansas City. Yeah, but not for him. It's, I it's, mean, he, he got a bunch of money up front, and I guess the argument is that he could do what, whatever he wants to do with that money and make a lot of money off of it. So take as much as you could get. But I mean, right. he would have gotten way more later, you know. But no, I don't, no, no, I, don't I know. know what but he could but, do with but let me let me finish. So the article was great because it talked about how Kansas City pulled pulled a, a fast one over. On him because the way it's set up, it's perfectly set up so that it decreases to a specific uh, uh, rate, right? And knowing that at a specific rate, I should say, and and as the salary cap keeps growing over these next couple of years because of all the contracts being signed for uh, the Sunday ticket and all this other money that's going to be coming their way for the salary caps, that leaves them enough room to keep feeding the new talent coming in the door. And but, if, 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 if Patrick Mahomes is going to be as good as he's been, then people are going to, he's going to be the new Brady. People are going to want to play with him. Right. I understand what you're saying. So they did a, a, a friendly, a cap friendly 10 year deal that will allow them to bring in talent and won't get bogged, you know, bogged down with so much money spent on the, the quarterback position because I, yeah, you know, it's just how the cap works. And I agree with that. Right. And that's why, and that's right. why people were shaking their head when Mahomes did do that deal because, you know, he should have done a shorter deal and then just repop for more money. Right. But yeah, if he takes a huge money up front, who knows? Maybe he was like, I'll take it all right now and I'll put it into Bitcoin. And then all of a sudden his money just went completely <laughs> off the fucking charts. You know, and, unless and it then could, it didn't. And, 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 until it didn't, right? But, I mean, whatever. I, Bitcoin's at, I, I didn't check recently, but I think it's 30-something, whatever. He did this yeah. he, he did this deal two years ago, maybe? Yeah, but it went up to 67. And so regardless, if he got it at 60, he's, his value is half. No, no, no. I, I understand that. But this deal was done a while ago. I'm, I'm doing it time-specific to when he did his deal. I'm just saying, yeah, like, that's, maybe that's he wanted supposing to, he checked out. I'm just saying if he got his money all up front early, maybe there was stuff he wanted to do with that money that would have earned him more than waiting for, you know, a, a deal in five years. So there right, might have been right, motivation right. I, I get what you're saying. for him to do what he wants to do, right? So, you know, I mean, here's his uh, here's his salary cap. Let me see if I can get his uh, numbers, right? So the deal, uh, where is the uh, cap number? So his cap number this year is 5.3 mil. Uh, that was last year. This year, it's 7.4. Next year, it's 35. The year after that, it's 46. Then it's 44, 46, 40, 60 in 2027. So there is going to be a big, gigantic restructuring uh, come 2027 because they are not going to expend $60 million uh, on his cap number. Right. So, right. Uh, you know. But it's a team-friendly deal because... It, they don't get hit with that for three years. Yes, right. right coming, coming, right. So uh, that's that's friendly, and and they'll know the top. This is all. This is also supposing that people are going to want to come. They're going to want Super Bowls, and two that their young talent doesn't become so good that they have to pay them. Right. He won't command more than twenty percent. Or twenty won't command more than twenty one percent of the cap uh, for the next three years. Twenty two, yes. he's seventeen percent. Twenty three, he's twenty one percent. Twenty four, he's seventeen percent. So that's where he's at. So, um, but yeah, I mean, if you look at the QB, let's go back to just QBs in general, and then we'll go into these games a little bit. You know, here's the QB the QBR 
for all QBR is this statistic used by ESPN if you're not familiar. But here are the top uh, quarterback talents: Josh Allen, Pat Mahomes, Matt Stafford, Mac Jones, Joe Burrow, Derek Carr, Jimmy Garoppolo, Dak Prescott, Jalen Hurts. Uh, I'll throw in Rodgers, Ryan Tannehill, Kyler Murray. Right. So, <laughs> yeah, and I took out Brady. So. You know, I mean, you take Rodgers out of that, and then it's, what, it's Mahomes, Josh Allen, Joe Burrow? Yeah. Uh, here, here's the list, right? Two, the, in the past two years, you've got, okay, first, Drew Brees, left. Second, Tom Brady. Third, Aaron Rodgers, if he leaves. Right. Four, Eli, Eli Manning. Okay. Five, uh, Tom Brady. Did I say Tom Brady already? Yeah, don't forget Andrew Luck. He pieced out. Oh, Andrew Luck. Andrew Luck left. That's six. Philip Rivers, seven. Uh, ben Roethlisberger, eight. And I think that's it. Did I miss anybody? Uh, not that's that I... eight. That's eight. Eight people we've come to know and love in the world of the NFL, fantasy, et cetera, et cetera. Eight starting quarterbacks that won how many championships among them? Yeah, that, that have all, like, pieced out. In two years. Yeah. It's a ton. And, I mean, th- you're going to Oh, Deshaun Watson. We're not even including Deshaun Watson, who nah, he'll play. may or may not ever... He'll, 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 he'll ultimately play again. That, that, that you what, think? Yeah, whatever. You know, I thought for a while he would never he would never play again. But I that whole deal is so screwy, and there's so much more to that issue. Um, where I, you know, something's going on. Where I, he definitely did what they're saying that he did. I just don't know the criminal nature of it. I it it sounds like he just proposed to these masseuses every time he would get a new you know therapist, a masseuse, you know, massager. He would just usually hit him up and been like, yeah, you know, like you want to do a little more. And it sounds like a lot of the girls were on board with it. So that's what I'm gathering is that I think he just used to do this. And a lot of the girls were like, yeah, sure. And some of them were like, no. And then ultimately why this bubbled to the top, it's kind of like a a Gruden deal, right? Like why did this all of a sudden hit? I don't know. You know, there's conspiracies that, the, you know, it was what, the, the Houston owner, right? That was one of the conspiracy theories that he knew that Watson was going to peace out. And he was like, you know, I'll ruin your career. You know, that, that was one of the conspiracies flying around. Whether or not that's true, who knows. But there is just something more to this where I, I don't know about if it's really has a criminal element to it. And if it doesn't have a criminal element to it and it just gets settled, then he'll be back tomorrow. I, I think it probably gets settled over the, over the summer. You know, unless I know there's a couple of girls that said that they were going to go the criminal route, but I don't know. I think it's going to be tough to prove. So, but neither here nor there. Watson, I, I think he'll be back, but maybe he's not. Who knows? Um, but I mean, look, well, it's you're, either eight or nine, eight or nine quarterbacks. That, well, you're also like, how long is Stafford? How long is Matt Stafford going to go? He's not a spring chicken. Well, he's got to be 33, 32. Yeah. 31. You know, I mean, maybe he's got two or three years left in him. No. You think more than that? Oh, he has to. He has to. He's 33, dude. Is, did you look it up? Is he 33? Yeah, he's 33. 33. So, 33, 2, 3, 4, play till 37. Like, don't, don't, look yeah, at, maybe. don't look at, don't look at uh, Brady, right? Because Brady is like... No, you know, he I, destroyed, know, I know, I know, I you know. Look at Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers is 38. So, that's five years, right? And Matthew Stafford yeah. is not Aaron Rodgers. Rivers was Brady was forty. Rivers was thirty nine. Manning was what thirty thirty nine thirty eight. Uh, you know, okay. And the long, I'll give you Stafford five years at the max, the max. But you yeah. know, this whole like quarterbacks playing until they're forty, I, you know that that shit never existed either. Um, but no, but it's it's not nineteen ninety anymore. It's not nineteen eighties anymore. The the technology the. The therapies they're getting, everything, things are a little different. The 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 format of of the rules and regulations is different. They're not allowed to hit the quarterback nearly as much right. or as hard. Yeah, you know, I, I mean Russell Wilson and Russell Wilson and uh, and 
Stafford are both 33. You have Aaron Rodgers, who is 38. You have Matt Ryan, who is 30, I'll tell you in two seconds, 36. He's old. Yeah, you know, he's so old. he's going to punch out too, right? So you're going to lose Rodgers. You're going to lose, uh, what do you call it? Uh, yeah, I just, I, the guy just said, uh, Matt Ryan. You're going to lose Rodgers. You're going to lose Ryan. Uh, you know, you got a couple of years left with, with Stafford and with Wilson. And then, I mean, you know, that, then it's just all the new guys. And they're just going to have to rise to the occasion. You know, this league's going to continue on, you know, in the way, manner that it has the past, you know, 20 years. I guess it's so long as Brady's been here because there's been a ton of quarterback talent. Within two years, you're losing 25% of your league in regards to starting quarterbacks, but Super Bowl champion starting quarterbacks. It's crazy. Yeah, and then you're going to be left with the likes of Justin Herbert, Pat Mahomes, Derek Carr, Joe Burrow. Dak Prescott, Josh Allen, uh, you know, Mac Jones, Kyler Murray, Baker Mayfield, Ryan Tannehill, Carson Wentz, Trevor Lawrence, uh, Jalen Hurts, if he's still playing. Uh, I, you well, know, Lamar, why wouldn't Lamar Jalen Jackson Hurts keep playing? I don't know. They, it sounds like they, they, they don't like him as QB. They want an upgrade from it. So, you know, he'll be around, but, you know, how good is he? Who knows? Lamar, Lamar Jackson. Jackson is not going to survive. No, no, he's not. But I mean, we're going to throw his name out there, you know. Now, you know, and then you got busts like you know Tua, who I, you know, who knows actually how good he is. Sam Darnold, Daniel Jones, you know, Justin Fields is a rookie. Well, we don't know how good he's going to be. You cannot put uh, Tua is going to be better than everybody you just named. Uh, you, you just don't know. My point being is that it's a very odd time for the NFL because you're losing old senior quarterbacks that played at a good level for a long time and you're losing them very rapidly. You know, and it just leaves a, a air pocket there of quarterback talent and you're going to need these guys to come forward. So to your end, where, when you mentioned Joe Burrow, yeah, it's great that Joe Burrow gets into one of these conference championship games early because you're going to need players like him to you know carry the mantle going forward. Yeah, you got Mahomes, Joe Burrow, uh, Justin Fields. People are arguing that Mac Jones is going to be there for a long time. Josh Allen. You know, outside of those top five guys I just named, maybe Trevor Lawrence. He has. I mean, he's got pedigree. But outside of those top five, you're talking about Dak Prescott. Yeah, you know, I, is, I know. That's what that, I'm saying. Like, I, I don't. There's nobody outside of those. I wouldn't even throw Kyler Murray in there because I don't think Kyler Murray can stay healthy. Um, I, I don't know. I just don't like I don't like short quarterbacks, right? And at the athletic talent that he needs to play the way that he plays, he doesn't play in the pocket, right? He rolls out, he wow. extends the play, and he throws the ball downfield. How long is Look that going to last? Brees. Drew Brees was short. Yeah, but he was a pocket passer. Like he figured it out. If you watch Kyler Murray, that that guy never likes to stay. He just doesn't like to stay in the pocket. He wants to run He's outside fast. and throw the ball. He's an athlete. Yeah, I, I mean, I get it. I just don't know how long or, you know, how long that's going to succeed or, you know, what what is his potential? What, what's his ceiling, right? So his, uh, his potential is going to be, I'm going to switch to playing baseball and peace out, guys. I'm nah, that's gone. Baseball. That's gone. He, he, he's not going to baseball. You know, once you get this far outside of it, I, you know, he's not going back. You know, it's gone at this point. You know, he's he's married to the NFL, and, and he's going to do fine. It's starting quarterback. He's going to see a ton of money. You know, he's fine. You know, he's not going to go to baseball because who knows how good you would have been at baseball, right? And, you know, you're going to go back and you're going to start the minors and try to work yourself up. I mean, he, he's a starting quarterback in the NFL. You know, he's got it made for, you know, at least. The well, he better years. stop running. Well, we'll see. Okay, so we have actually done 50 minutes so far, and we haven't even touched the games. So let's let's get right into conference championship uh, Sunday here, and we'll start off with the first game, which is going to be our AFC matchup. Second down. Second down. And the first game at 3 o'clock at Arrowhead Stadium will be seen on CBS, and it will feature the Kansas City Chiefs hosting the Cincinnati Bengals. Currently, the Chiefs are seven-point favorites. The over-under on this game is 55 points. Right now, the Sharps are in on the Bengals. The tickets and the money both on the Chiefs. Tickets just a little bit at 61%, but the money pool is heavy in, in favor of Kansas City, 82% in that regard. So the money is loving the Chiefs and 
at Mahomes here at home. Uh, go over to the DVOA standings. The Chiefs offense was three versus the Bengals defense, which was 19. The big discrepancy there is the pass offense, which for the Chiefs was ranked third. And then the defensive, the pass defense for the Bengals was 24. So you got a huge three versus 24 uh, discrepancy there, and which is, you know, it, it's going to be the story of the game, if you ask me. I, I don't know what the Bengals defense is going to do, but we'll get more to the game in a little bit. Flip it over. The Bengals offense. Defense is 18, and the Chiefs' defense is 20. So here we are, Conference Championship Sunday. The Chiefs in the championship yet again. Pat Mahomes under center. Is there anything that is going to prevent them from moving on to the Super Bowl? I guess another Jamar Chase blow-up game? Yeah, I mean, that's really that, that's the hope if you're Cincinnati, right? It's, it's, just, it's going to be Burrow in... It's going to be Burrow and Chase. I don't think they're even going to go that route again. I think they're going to go the Higgins route. Well, everybody and their brother is all on the Tyler Boyd over-under numbers right now. Boyd's over-under in terms of yardage was 37.5. And and I've seen more Tyler Boyd props than I, I know what to do with. But... I, to me, I don't. I don't think so. I mean, y- your best athlete is Chase, and your man is Burrow. And if they're going to be in this game at all, those two are just going to have to connect. I, I, I can't see any other situation where Cincinnati stays in this game. Yeah, but Spagnuolo's not going to let that happen. I, I mean, look, it, the Kansas City's defense is twenty fourth. DVOA, 23rd against the pass, 20, 20th against the run. I, Spags is great at getting pressure. He's been doing it ever since, you know, I mean, obviously, go all the way back to the Giants Super Bowls. I, he's good in that regard, but, you know, he can't make up for the fact that, you know, the Kansas City defense has a couple of big names, but not a ton of talent, right? I mean, it's not like you're going to put well, them on the top tier, you know, of defenses. Yeah, so I'm going back to the wild card game, uh, the divisional games. The... Buffalo Bills, Chiefs, look at the box score here. They held Stefan Diggs to three catches, seven yards on six targets. So yeah, he didn't even I look think, at Diggs, though, right? I mean, he just didn't look at Diggs. Well, he was double. He was double covered the whole game. Okay. So, so that's, that's, that's where I'm getting to is that I think they're going to probably try and do the exact same thing. I personally think Diggs is better than Chase. I think he's – a more established receiver. You think Diggs is better uh, I mean, than Chase? No way. I cheat. I think Chase is uh, Ch- good. Ch- Chase is good, but Diggs has been doing this for a long time. Diggs was the number. Diggs was the wide re- number one wide receiver last year. Yeah, he had a shit football. year. I agree, and and he's. I'm, I'm saying he's a great. I I love him as a talent. Always have. Um, and I'm glad that he got out of Minnesota. He didn't have a spectacular year this year. He had a phenomenal year last year, but as a pure. Wide receiver talent, I just think Chase is better. My opinion, but, you know. So. Yeah, it's, I, honestly, there's not enough metrics to weigh one versus the other yet because they're too far apart in, you know, their, their accomplishments inside of the NFL. But Chase is very, very good. Don't get me wrong. I, I just can't imagine Kansas City after just giving up. Let's go back here because I, I don't remember the exact numbers. I think it was 200 yards, right? Oh, that the last game that they played that everybody's trying to reference and saying this is how they did it last time. Yeah, it yeah, was, there, it was it some was ridiculous two hundred and sixty six yards. Yeah, it was a crazy number. I mean, his they're, his they're over not under allow that. his over under is the second on the weekend. Chase's yardage is eighty six and a half, second only oh. to Cooper Cup, who's over over three bills or three digits at a hundred point five. If Cooper Cup doesn't win the MVP this year, it's it's a travesty. Tra- travesty? Tragedy. Tragedy. Travesty? No, I Tragedy. think travesty works, too. Travesty, yeah. I think travesty works. Uh, all right, well, we'll get to Cooper Cup later, but in regards to here. But yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I just, I'm, if I'm a, an NFL defensive coordinator, I think all week long they're probably running Tyree Kill as if he's – Jamar Chase in practice, and they're they're trying to get their their double coverage the entire time. Yeah, I would think. Sure. All right. Well, I think where we're going with this is the Bengals are going to have a very difficult time 
trying to overcome the Chiefs on the road. You know, especially look, the Bengals shouldn't even be here. I, no. I, I mean, you ask me. They should have lost that game last week. That game last week versus Tennessee was so criminal in nature. I, I mean, Vrabel should cry at night. The fact that he screwed that game up so bad. Yeah, they were they were not a better team than Tennessee. Tennessee, with all their players healthy and in football shape, was a much better team. Yeah, I just some of the decisions that he made were just head scratching. You know, I mean, he yeah, was just blatant, bad. moronic in, sp- in spots. That third down option run that he tried at, at one point, and then they did the fourth down to um, to Henry. That whole series, those two things combined were terrible. You know, not going for, I, and look, that whole game was one thing and one thing only. I did this huge, <laughs> I, I wanted to do every game last week, and then I did the Cincinnati Bengal game versus the Titans, and then I it, I thought I uploaded it, and it never uploaded because something was wrong with the audio file. And so I did this hour-long thing all about the game, and then I never even uploaded the damn thing. But that game was all about... It was all about going for two. Going for two at that first score screwed up everything else. The Titans would have been in yes. the championship had it had they, yes. they had they won. Yep. They just would have ran the clock out. Well, they, you know, the Bengals would have gotten the ball back still, but I just think it would have been a completely different... Uh, uh, situation, but point being, I don't think the Bengals should be here, and I have trouble seeing how they're going to be able to stop the Chiefs' offense. And I don't know if they've got enough horses to keep up with them offensively, especially since, like, you look at what happened last week. Yeah, I mean their their offensive line is terrible. Burrow hit the ground so much. He's he's better than he's good enough to get out of the pocket, regardless of the offensive line, that I'm not really worried about that. I'm more concerned about what the running game's going to do and look like because I don't think they're going to be able to shoot, have a shootout with Kansas City. It's just not going to happen. They were losing 28-17. Kansas City was smoking them the last time they played. And then they decided in the second half they were going to play some defense and Mahomes didn't have a chance to to just run around like a madman. If they don't slow this game down, it's going to be a blowout, my, my opinion. I, I agree with you. I, here's the deal for me. I look at the defense, and I look at some of these names, right? I Hendrickson, Bates. Very good. Very that, good. And then that's it, right? And then well, the Wilson's other— Wilson's good. Von Bell, Eli Apple, I, 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 Logan Wilson— uh, B.J. Hill, D.J. Reed. I, I mean, come on. Who Wilson's good. Who are these guys? Who are these guys? Uh, who's the other Hendrickson and who's the other defensive lineman that's really good? Well, they lost the one two weeks ago. Um, I forgot his name, but he blew his uh, whatever his knee or ankle out, so he he was out for the uh, for the playoffs. But I, you know, covered. Hey, uh no, he went to the uh, IR. I forgot his name. I, I I said it last week and I, I forgot it now. That's how these. But uh, but Hubbard's pretty good. He's okay. He's okay. I'm. My point being is that is the ta- are is this the talent that's going to be able to stop Patrick Mahomes? No. Like no way. No. You know, Hendrickson's no, probably gonna... their best defender. Bates is probably their second. Maybe you know flipped around, but uh, you know. I would think Bates I would is say, better than Hendrickson, actually. I, I like Bates more than Hendrickson as talent, but it's just not enough. I would I would hammer the spread, and I would hammer the uh, uh, the under. But what I would say is if you could juice up the, the Chiefs from the seven, I would even go up to ten, and I still think they're going to cover it. Yeah, I'm all over the Chiefs in this spot only because I don't see how this defense is going to hold the the Chiefs in. And then you're going to need the offense to light it up. And look, the Bengals won last week 19-16. to It's not like they scored 30 points last week. And they beat the Raiders when they probably should have lost that game. Right? I, I mean, this is just a Bengals team. Nice story, and I love the fact that Burrow's in this championship game. But this is not the team that I wanted to see the Chiefs go up against in the conference championship. It's just not. 
I don't think they have the horses on defense, and I don't know if the offense is going to be able to manufacture the points needed to stay in this. And that, that's just my feeling. It kind of feels like you're on the same way wavelength, at least in terms of Kansas City covering. Yeah, I, I definitely think so. I'm, I'm trying to look right now. As, and you were talking uh, about the under, right? The over-under right now is 55. The tickets... Yeah. Tickets are on the over at 81%. The money is on the under at 51%. So yeah, pros high. versus Joes. It's too high. Yeah, I like the under. It's, I like the under at 55. Yeah, yeah. I, I, the way I'm looking at it is if it's 38, it'd have to be 38 to 34, 35, 30, 35 to 40. That's so high, 35 to 20. I thought 55 points was so many points. I just thought it was a lot 30, of points for this game. They're they're looking at a 28, 30, 32 to, to 21, 32 to – that's high, man. That's so high. Well, I mean, for the past two weeks, what you've seen is a whole handful of unders and a whole handful of overs, and they're usually at complete polar opposite ends of the spectrum where, like last week, 35-23, and then the other games were 57 and 78. Right, I mean, it was just like you know, you got a twenty-three game and you got a seventy-eight game, you know. So I, I don't. Obviously, I guess the two teams could score. The Bengals obviously have a puncher's chance at all times because they have Burrow and Chase. I just think you're going to need more here. Some of the intra-game numbers for me were, you know, like Mixon at sixty-eight and a half rushing yards. I, I I love that as an under. Now, to your end, if they're going to stay in the game. They're going to have to slow it down, and then you might think that Mixon's an over number. Yeah, easy. Easy. So you, you like Mixon at the 68 and a half? Sure. I definitely do. See, because I don't, I, don't, I don't think Kansas City. That's such a, those are such bullshit props for the simple reasoning that that could go out the door by the end of the first quarter. Because if, if, if Kansas City goes up 10 nothing in the first quarter, you're fucked. There's but no way you're getting. I agree. Mixon's going to get them right, and that's why I'm picking. That's why I'm picking Mixon because I think that the Bengals are going to be behind multiple scores, and they're not going to have the luxury of trying to slow the game down and u- utilizing Mixon. So that, that's why I like the under because I think it's going to yeah. play out that way. Right? I I I th- I'm, I'm going with my gut. I think that Kansas City is not going to allow them to pass. And so they're going to have to – Not I shouldn't say that. That's a bold statement. They're going to try and eliminate specific parts of the passing game, leading them to have open boxes for Mixon to run. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, I, I got you. And so you would be leaning on an over on that one. Again, I just don't think yeah. the game's going to play out that way. But you know, that's why you make the predictions, right? You, you think one way, and then you see what happens. And in regards to me, I see things one way, and then it just... I have no clairvoyance, because I see nothing correctly. I, I was over. I, well, no, I was, I was one for three last week in all my picks. I picked the Chiefs, and I won that game by the, the skin and my tinny t- teeth teeth. Did you, did you hear that, by the way? <laughs> the Al Michaels flub? No, but... He was trying to say I, the hair of his chinny-chin-chin and by the skin of his teeth. And so he fucked it up and put it together and said by the skin of his tinny... Uh, the skin of his teethy-teeth-teeth. Teeth, 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 teeth Something like that, yeah. That's funny. And it, it was a I terrible, heard... terrible call for a, uh, you know, a divisional game that ended with a field goal. I heard some rumor about Al Michaels that... Somebody's trying to recruit him for ESPN for Monday for night football? Thursday night. I think uh, I think ESPN for Monday night. Is that what it was? Or maybe maybe Al Michaels Thurs- and Troy Aikman on Thursday night football. That's what it was. Yes. Yeah. For but that's what Amazon's trying. Right, because Amazon's Amazon- yeah they're going to get the Thursday night schedule. Next week, next yeah, year, right? At, and they're and they're in the bid bidding war for the uh, the Sunday Sunday NFL ticket. By the hair of his skinny teeth, teeth. Here we go. I'm gonna tr- <laughs> I'm gonna try to play this one uh, over my microphone. I I, d- I don't have the TV hooked up to my board, so I'm gonna have to do this in a completely 
terrible, you know, shitty route here. But I'm going to put the phone up to my microphone so that you can hear this. First of all, I got to jack this. But here we go. All right, here we go. <laughs> like what? By now the that, hair of his skinny teeth teeth. Yeah, by the hair of his skinny teeth teeth. Um, I, I wanted the whole thing, uh, but I guess, I don't know. That's the only one what that I found. What the hell? Yeah, it was a terrible, terrible call. He hits it. He's completely, <laughs> I forget. I was listening to somebody. So he combines by the, ha- by the hair on his chinny chin chin. Yes, and, and the skin of his teeth. Skin of his teeth. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, by the hair and his skinny teeth, teeth. Yeah, uh, I can't find the whole thing. Anyway, um, maybe you can find it online. Listen to it because the whole thing drawn out. Somebody I was listening to was saying uh, one of the podcasts. I listen to so many. Somebody was saying he definitely had money, or no, maybe it was. I think I always listen to WFA, and I think it was Evan Roberts that was saying it. Was that he definitely had money on the game because he just gave such a terrible call. And then at the end, he flubs it with the hair of his skinny teeth teeth. The hair of his skinny teeth teeth. I I mean, you couldn't. You're talking about Al Michaels. You're talking about Tom Brady's last game, and that's how it ended in that kind of call. It was so funny. Anyway. um, So I I digress here, but, uh, you know, let's go back to the games here. These props, you know, I'll, I'll go through the props receiving, rushing, and passing for this game. Chase is over under is 86 and a half. Higgins is at 66 and a half. Boyd is at 37 and a half. The on the opposite side, um, you have uh, where did I put Tyree Kill at 76 and a half. Travis Kelsey at 71 and a half. In regards to rushing yards, you have Mixon at 68 and a half. Uh, I didn't pull anything for um, the Chiefs passing yards. Mahomes is at twenty two eighty five and a half. I have an over on that. I think Mahomes breaks three hundred, and Burrow is at two eighty one and a half. Two eighty one. Oof. I mean, they're both under three hundred. That's seventy yards a game. I'm mean, seventy yards a quarter. I mean, I, I just think it's good. I think Mahomes at least. I think Mahomes eat, breaks three bills in this game. I definitely think so. I no, I'm going to go the other way. I think Burrow breaks it, and and Mahomes doesn't. Yeah. I, all right. So, uh, well, I'm a Mahomes. You, you're liking the Burrow one, and like I said, I like to mix in under. Uh, I like the Jamar Chase over at 86 and a half. I know that you were talking about Spags trying to take away Chase in this game, I, but I like the under. I'm, I'm on the opposite side of that. I've heard a lot of people like home. the under. I, the Bengals, if they're going to be in this game at all, they're going to need Chase to have a shit ton of yardage. Like, I, I can't see them even coming close to winning this game without utilizing Jamar Chase. That's why I don't think they're going to win this game. Right, okay. I I, I get it. Yeah, sure. I, that's, that's, I, I can't say that because if Hig, Higgins is very good too. Nobody, get, he doesn't get enough credit. That, that dude's pretty good. Um, I, are are, now are under, you on now the I Boyd understand. over? Are you on the Boyd over like I, the rest I, of the planet? I was, just a, I was just about to talk about that. So now I understand why Boyd is everybody's so hot on Boyd. I no, I'm not. I'm not. It, Boyd is three bad games, one great game. Three bad games, one great game, and you never know when that's going to happen. No, you you really don't. But I, and that's probably why people are taking it here. But an, an, an over under doesn't really get you good odds, right? So. You're just doing no, it's even garbage. Money. Yeah. Yeah, it's garbage. Which is why, if that's the way that you're going, oh, yeah, this is going to be the game that Boyd comes out. Like, why would you put your money on that? Because you're just going to, you're just going to get your money back. Right. You're yeah, just going to double your money. Like, I, you know, there's better ways to invest your money, in my opinion. But yeah, no, you're right. You know, I, you're right. you know, I would take, right. I would take Chase because I just think that he's going to break that because they're going to use him a bunch. But the logic behind Boyd is kind of like, oh yeah, this is going to be the one game that he breaks it, you know. Or I guess to your end that they shut down, they shut down Chase and they got to go somewhere, so they go to Boyd and he only needs over thirty-seven and a half. Yeah, I, I just, I don't know. I, if I'm going to play an over/under on yards, I'm going to play with Higgins. I'm not going to play with Boyd. Yeah. Uh, the only other thing I have written out here is receptions. Hill was six and a half. Kelsey was six and a half. Chase was five and a half. Kelsey, uh, uh, 
Tyree Kill under, Travis Kelsey over. What was the third one? Uh, Chase at five and a half. <laughs> That's a good one. I mean, the numbers are good. Six for 60. That's what I'm looking at for him. For Chase, six for 60? Yeah. Wow. Mixon, I like the under at 68 and a half. They also have his attempts at 15 and a half. What did he do? Vegas, last? Vegas sucks, man. They really know how to lay it to you. Mixon got 14 carries last week for 54 yards and a touchdown. That's exactly why they did it. So 15. So, all right. Well, all those things uh, on the table there for you to take a stab and make some money with. Again, the things that I liked, uh, I, I liked the Mahomes over. You liked the Burrow over. I liked the Mixon under. You would lean Mixon over. Uh, I like to chase over. You like to chase under. Uh, and then you were also on the Boyd wagon at 37 and a half. Yeah. And taking the over on that one. Yeah. And so I did. I, I also like the, well, to pick the games, I'm taking the Chiefs. It also is my lock of the weekend of the two games. And then I am taking under. Sounds like you like the Chiefs as well. Do you have a lean on the over under? I. It's going to go under. But. Go. It, de, what was the Higgins one? Did you give me the Higgins one? Higgins yardage over under was sixty six and a half. Over. Oh, so you like the over on that one? I'll take the over on that over the over on Boyd. Oh, I see. Okay, so you're going to do it that way. That's the way they yeah. going to play out. So, all right, yeah. cool. So that is the three o'clock AFC game. Let's head over to the other conference. Third down. Third down. So our second game, the nightcap, I guess it's kind of a nightcap, at 6.30 at SoFi Stadium, game to be played on Fox. You've got the Los Angeles Rams fresh off that victory in Tampa Bay, hosting the 49ers. The Rams are three-and-a-half-point favorites. The over-under is 45-and-a-half. Right now, the Sharps, last I checked, had not taken a lean. 57% of the tickets are on the Rams, and 69 <laughs> uh, of the percentage of the money pool is on the Rams. So it's all Rams in this one. Um, and then for the over and under, you have pros versus Joes. 63% of the tickets like the over. 65% of the money pool likes the under. So uh, let's check out DVOA real quick. Rams offense, 8. 49ers defense, 7. You got a good matchup there. Rams are 49ers offense, 5. Rams defense, 5. So this game, uh, I definitely think, is the better of the two games. This is the one that I'm excited to see. I'm, I don't know if I'm excited to see Jimmy Garoppolo, though, but I am excited to see this game and see what happens. Um, I, I think one thing, and I'll, I'll get to it in a second. I'll kick the I'll punt to you. I'll let you take off and, and say what you think uh, what the results of this game will turn out to be. I don't know. I the biggest thing about this game is who's gonna who's gonna what are they gonna do with Cam Akers? What are they gonna do with Sony Michelle? Is Debo Samuel really healthy? And how many receptions is George Kittle gonna get? <laughs> That's George Kittle's gonna be over. Cam Akers, I think is not going to get the ball. I think this is going to be a Sony Michelle game. Well, Cam Akers is going up against the second-ranked defensive uh, run defense. Right, yes. run defense. So, uh, in the 40, and the 49ers defensive line has played phenomenal. If you listen to any kind of medium, uh, any kind of podcast, whatever, all anybody has talked about now for two weeks is the 49ers defense, uh, especially the defensive line. Not to mention D'Amico, D'Amico Ryan's now is all of a sudden uh, he's on this uh, rocket missile toward head coaching after you know the season that he's had. I, I mean, Ryan's is is a newbie in defensive coordinating. And after last week, all well, everybody wanted to have a head coaching job. But anyway, the defense is playing very well. They're seventh again, second against the run, 16th against the pass. Tomiko Ryan's from the Eagles? Tomiko, no. Uh, remember, he was, a, he was a linebacker for years in Houston. Houston. I, only, I thought I remember him from... Come on, we play IDP. You should know Tomiko Ryan's. I, I'm looking it up. Well, anyway, I'll go through some of the props here because maybe this can factor into some of the talk. Uh, in regard to the 
uh, Rams. Let's do receptions. We are receiving yards. Cup is, as, is at 105 yards over under. OBJ is at 54.5. Higby is at 40.5. Jefferson is at 30.5. And, and Akers is at 18.5. On the flip side, you have Kittle at 52.5. Samuel at 51.5. And, and Ayuk at 49.5. Um, Cup, they also have it 7.5 in terms of receptions, which I thought was a really high number. Uh, and also, his longest reception is at 28.5. So, Cup, Cup, they just have him at such high stats for all of these. 100 and, 100 and a half yards, 7.5 receptions, and longest reception of 28.5 yards. Um, Rushing-wise, Mitchell, Elijah Mitchell is at 69.5. Akers is at 60.5. And then the quarterbacks, Stafford's at 280 and Garoppolo's at 230 and a half. So you can chew on that a little bit as we talk about the game. I'll be honest, I don't know how the 49ers pull this off. I am on an island in this one because everybody and their brother thinks the Rams lose this game. I haven't heard anybody pick the Rams. Not a single person. I'm picking the Rams. That's crazy. I'm picking the Rams too. I'm just telling you, I have not heard anybody pick the Rams. I'm going to juice up the spread, too. I At three and a half, I love the Rams in this spot. Yeah, I love it. I mean, again, this plays out kind of like the Bengals did last week. San Francisco should not have won that game. They should not have won that game. <laughs> Green Bay screwed the pooch so bad in that game. They did all these bullshit first down runs. I mean, their play calling screwed them. They were always playing from behind. Because they couldn't stop running the ball on first down, which was insane. And then, you know, I mean, San Francisco, Jimmy Garoppolo late in that game, and I, I forget when it was, I, I should have written it down, but late in that game, Jimmy was 7 for 14 for 75 yards and a pick. And that was when it was 10-3 Green Bay in the second half. I mean... I just can't believe they won. It's just so crazy. But, but to be fair... Aaron Rodgers was their offense was horrible after that first touchdown. They were horrible. Yep. Yeah, well, the play calling didn't help at all, at all. Rewatch that game and watch all of the first down runs. It just got shit. Dylan got hurt too. And Dylan got did get hurt, and but I don't know if that would have mattered. The fact is, you got Aaron Rodgers at home. Like, why aren't you trying to stretch the field? And, I mean, I will say, you know, Rodgers has a right to have beef with their front office. Because as that game's going on, outside of Devontae Adams, who the hell is on that offense? You know, Alan Lazard? (sighs) Jones and A.J. Dillon? I mean, there is just not top-flight talent. They lost Tunyon, right, to injury. I personally think that Aaron Jones is really good, but nobody seems to agree with me. Dylan's better. No, Dylan's a better runner. Yeah, he's not a better. He's not a better football player. Uh, no, I don't know. I, I, I kind of Jones. Like Jones. Jones can run. He can receive. He can make moves that Dylan can't. Dylan is a North South Derrick Henry esque running runner. Yeah, I, I just wanted to see more Dylan, uh, and then he got hurt, which sucks. Yeah, well, that threw off that threw off a lot of their game plan because it was it was zero degrees there and it was snowing. You run the ball. I I can't again. I watched that game and I just was I picked it. I picked the Packers. I was all over the Packers. I I loved them, and I just couldn't understand when I was watching that game. I was writing back and forth to uh, a buddy of mine, and I just write. I said Green Bay's finding a way to lose this game. Like they they don't want to win the game. You know they were up. And the first half, Green Bay was in complete control. Complete control. San Francisco had one drive, one drive the entire first half. You know, and then they had a huge penalty that turned into a tur- uh, into a turnover, and then they had the big special teams play when they uh, blocked the field goal. When Lancaster didn't even know the ball snapped. He just stood there, and it was like, dude, what, do you, what are you doing? So... <laughs> But we're talking about last week's game. The only reason I'm trying to reference the last week's game so much is because I, I don't know. You know, San Francisco is going to now, you know, go on the road here into SoFi and be able to play that same kind of game against the the Rams. I mean, Green Bay handed them the game. The Rams are not going to do that. I never even looked it up. Do you know what the weather report is in, in Kansas City, by the way, to go back to the other game? 
Uh, yes, I did. Uh, they, it was, it's supposed to be a, a nice day. Weather is not going to be a factor anywhere. Well, especially okay. not SoFi because it's in a dome, but um, in Kansas City, it's going to be fine. Oh, and okay. the one thing that um, I didn't bring up in the oh, bring up for the Kansas City game, and we'll just uh, digress for two seconds. If you again, depending on you know how much you listen to podcasts and all the rest, the other element that a lot of gambling podcasts have talked about is the referee crew. I have never heard people talk about referee crews as much as I heard this week, and it's funny because usually what I do, I like to listen to the uh, gambling podcast on the Ringer Network, which is Warren Sharp. Um, you know, Warren Sharp, I love. Uh, sometimes he's a little bit too much of you know, uh, you know, I know, I, I know, you know, little, little smarty pants. What I'm trying to go at. He's a little bit of a too smarty pants, but uh, I do like his takes. And he talked about it, and then literally I haven't stopped hearing about it all week long. The, the one thing that he talked about, everybody else picked up on. And that was the referee crew. They don't throw flags, uh, so that's going to lead toward the over in that game. Um, I don't know who the crew is here, but I just remember, remembered that because I was like, I want to talk about that. And I don't want to mention it. So anyway, Chiefs Bengals, if you like the over, then people have been talking about the referee crew the whole time. But weather there should be fine. Weather in the, with Los Angeles, the game we're talking about now, should not be impacted. It's a dome. So, um, But like I said, Rams here, three and a half versus the 49ers. I don't know how the 49ers are, are going to... Their defense can keep them in the game all they want, but I mean, Jimmy just... He's just so bad. You know, he pieced things together at the end of last week, but, man, he's just not good. I don't know if it's that he's not good. I just don't know if he's the right quarterback for that team. I think if he had what – I think we'd be talking about him differently if he was on the Rams and he had the receiving crew that the Rams had. No, do you, do I don't you know think what I so. Mean? Look, I, I know what you mean, but I don't think so. Look, last last week in the Green Bay game, I remember there was there was a play, the interception in, in the second half that the 49ers had when they were driving, right? Kittle was wide open, and he was wide open, and Jimmy saw him wide open, but then Jimmy just fixated on Kit, Kittle and couldn't get it out of his head to the point that as soon as he just ate up all this time trying to scramble, and then he finally threw it to Kittle, and it was too late. And and the openness, if you want to use that word, of Kittle had just evaporated. And then it turned into an interception because the D-back, or whoever picked that ball off, I forgot, was able to close the gap in the time that it took Jimmy to scramble and finally get the ball out of his hand. That, That was such a huge play because you're driving, you're going to get points. You don't throw the ball there, right? Like you should be able to see like Kittle, like he just gets it stuck in his crawl. I want to do this. He can't think dynamically. And I, you know, I, that's why I just don't like him as a quarterback. I don't think he's terrible. You know, I, well, I just said he was terrible, so I can't say he's terrible and then say he's not terrible. I don't think it's no fucks that spot. Um, I, I just don't think he's a premier talent. And I, I don't know how they're going to be able to pull this off, uh, you know, because I think the Rams are going to score some points here. I, I know that everybody says that San Francisco's defensive front is super strong and their defense, you know, and uh, what's his name? Warner is the best coverage linebacker in the game, uh, et cetera, et cetera. But I just think the Rams are going to be able to manufacture some points here, no? Yes. I, I And to go off of what you're saying, I, I remember the play vividly and – you're right. The Garoppolo I, nobody, interception. You know, yes. Yeah. And I don't. I don't know what he was. Only Jimmy Garoppolo can tell you what he was thinking in that moment. It's. It's. That's one example in a conference championship game that you're right when the when it matters most. How how do you do something like that? But I'm I'm thinking more along the lines of if you've seen the statistics of what he's like when he's on the field versus what he's like when he's not on the field, San Francisco's win-loss record is uncomparable. Yeah, but I think you could say that about any team that goes to a backup, right? Right, any team that goes to a backup, they're going to be better off with the starter. You know what I mean? Uh, Yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah, I, I know the stats because I've seen them too, and it, it, and you argue that, and you're like, oh wow, they're better with Jimmy. Why would you want somebody else? But the point being is that yeah, well, because they're better with Jimmy because the backup would be terrible. That would be the case anywhere. 
I, the, and Trey Lance, can we stop talking about Trey Lance? Please? They, they freaking traded a lot of picks for him. I turn on Twitter at any given point, and the minute that Jimmy sucks, you just get all this Trey Lance talk. I mean, it is just obnoxious. It is obnoxious. Right? I mean, I trust Kyle Shanahan. That's who I trust. That guy coached them to an NFC Championship game. He's one of the best in the biz. You know, I trust him. And I don't want to hear, you know, all of Twitter talk about Trey Lance. I, he's not the fucking answer. He's not the answer. But anyway, um, Jimmy here in this spot I don't like. I just don't like him on the road. I do like their defense. I think their defense can, you know, keep the Rams, you know, at a close pace. But, I mean, I think ultimately, I don't know if Jimmy can rise to the occasion here. I agree. I, I, like I told you, I'm, I'm going to juice up the spread the other way. So, I, I really don't like San Francisco. They, they've done unbelievable to get to where they are. And I get, I get it that they're like, well, fate's on our side. We're going to make it. We've tried so hard. Like, no. You, Los Angeles is a much better team. They're, they're a much better team. And nobody seems to be talking about... The fact that freaking Sean McVay is going to be back in another Super Bowl. Two years, what is he, two years removed? Uh, it was the New England one. So that would well, be three years, right? Because this would be the third year. Because It's it w- just crazy. It's it's crazy. Like he's, I don't know how he's, how he's, his teams keep making it there. Like he's had, he had freaking, what's his name? Yeah, well, uh, he was married to Goff. He finally got rid of Goff. Are you Not saying that? Off. Are you trying to say that he's a great coach? Is that where you're going with this? No, I'm just shocked. I, I just, I don't look at him as a great coach, but his teams just keep doing really. Gurley, that's who it was. Gurley, when when Gurley was just a yeah, that was way back when, right? But that was that God. wasn't that long ago. No, it was whatever four years ago, three years ago. Yeah. It was Goff, Gurley. Uh, who were their wide receivers? Cup. Um, was it Cup and Woods? I don't even remember back then. No, oh no! It was, it was no. It was uh. It was what's his face that they then sent to uh, Cooks. 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 Brandon Cooks, yeah. and he got he got drilled in the Super Bowl. I, I thought he was going to be you know drooling out of his mouth get, for the rest of his life. Did he get knocked out of the Super Bowl? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure he got drilled like beginning of the game. He was out cold. I don't think he came back in that game. If memory serves me right. But yeah, he was one of the receivers, and I think Cooks. I it was Cooks and Cop. I think. I'm pretty Cop sure. Cop was young. Yeah, but I think Cop he was, was on like that a team. Rookie. So. Yeah. You know, I just don't know how the 49ers are going to. Obviously, Shanahan is going to pull out his bag of tricks, and he's going to do everything in his power to try to accommodate, uh, uh, compensate for the fact that Garoppolo is is so shaky. I just don't think it's going to be enough. And so here with the Rams, I like the three and a half. I was going to make yeah, it the lock. Yeah, I love the three and a half. Yeah, I, I, I was going to make it the lock, but I really like Kansas City, uh, even with the seven points. Um, and I, I just think that the 49ers have a better chance than the Bengals do to stay in that game. Watch none of this happen, and it happened all the opposite right now. But you're going to take the Rams as well in that three and a half? Yeah, definitely. And then the 45 and a half points, I like the under in that one too. I was actually going to go the opposite way. I think that the Rams are going to score. I, I think it's going to. I think this is going to be more of a shootout than the other game. Uh, I I don't. I question whether or not the 49ers are going to be able to produce the points. And with I the forty five and a half, I think they're screaming that you know San Francisco's defense is going to try to keep this to a low scoring affair. That's why they like the forty five. I I like to think that as well, but I think then why I go the under is because I don't think 49ers are going to be able to contribute point-wise, but we'll see what happens. I mean, 45 and a half is not a lot of points. I mean, it's not. It's not, you know, the way that these games have lined up, they've either, you know, smashed it and been in the 60s and 70s, or they've been in the 20s. (laughs) Yeah, I guess that's true. I I don't know. I'm looking at this game as... Rams winning by three and a half, more like six and a half on a fourth quarter, uh, a blowout that was 10 points or 14 points. And the the 49ers get a touchdown late, but it doesn't matter. It's not enough. And 
Rams win by seven. I'm looking at like 27-17. Something around that. That's low. Yeah, I mean, that's what I'm, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm that's what I'm thinking. Okay. All right. And well, that would, be, we'll that would be the Rams. See how it plays under. out. Yeah. So anyway, uh, some of the props that we talked about, uh, things that I like. I, Brandon Ayuk under 49 and a half points. Uh, 49 and a half points. 49 and a half yards. Um, I, I don't know. He, sometimes he's been a factor, but he was absent the entire year. Uh, came on a little bit toward the end, but you know, 49 and a half points when Debo Samuel is at 51 and a half. I, you know, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm taking that Ayuk and the under there. Um, like I said, Kittle's at 52 and a half. Samuel's at 51 and a half. And I like the OBJ over at 54 and a half because I think you're going to see uh, a little bit of OBJ in this game today. I, I can't figure that dude out, man. I just don't know. Is he good? Is he? Yeah, he's good. good. He just has to be used. You know, it, it's just when the team decides to use him, he's f- phenomenal. Uh, you know, you're not going to see a lot of him all the time with the Rams because they do have talent, you know, elsewhere. But I think in a game like this, I think he's primed to have a big game. You know, Cup at 105 yards, I, you know, I, I kind of lean under in that one. But, I mean, he, he smashes that all the time. So, seven and a half receptions, I don't know what to make of that. But 28 and a half yards is his longest play. I do like an under there. I'll take the under at 28 and a half. I don't think that happens. It's a 30-yard bomb to, to Cup. To Cup is so... I just don't... It's not that he's so good. He's just playing very... What is he? He's fifth year? I, I can't remember. You'd have to pull it up. You'd have to pull it up. But it's got to be around five. Because we were just talking Four about that five. Super Bowl, and I'm pretty sure he was in it. Yeah. He's really good. I just don't think he's... He's just having an incredible season. Incredible. He's also peppered with more targets than anybody in the league. So. Yeah, no, well, his reception props is seven and a half. That's the highest uh, that I found. He should smash that. He Higby should smash at, that. Higby at 40 and a half. Higby, they use Higby quite a bit. I don't know what to do with that 40 and a half. Jefferson at 30 and a half. Jefferson well, is hurt. They were talking about him might not be able to go today, but I think he, he got the thumbs up last I saw. As for rushing, Mitchell is at 69 and a half, and Akers is at 60 and a half. Mm, Acres under. I don't. Yeah, even think I, I was thinking gonna... about Acres and under too because that defensive front is really strong. I don't think he's going to be the leading rusher on the team. Well, I they, they go back that... forth between him and Michelle. And remember, Acres screwed the pooch last week. I mean, God, yeah, hold on to the fumbles. damn ball. Hold on to the ball. Huge fumbles. Not not even like just a fumble. Like huge fumbles. So Huge. I would lean toward the under there at 60 and a half as well. And yeah, then, I would go under. You know, and then Stafford, 280, Garoppolo, 230. I don't have any lean there. What's his, what's Michelle's? Sony Michelle, I, I didn't, I didn't grab it. I didn't see it. I, I would imagine if Akers at 60 and a half, then Michelle will probably be 45. Maybe I'll pull up DraftKings real quick and see if I can't find it. But I would imagine that if they're given Acres sixty and a half, Michelle would be secondary to him. Uh, here's the rushing receiving props. Uh, no, they don't have. I they don't have it at DraftKings either. They have Acres. Oh, Debo Samuel. Debo Samuel at forty and a half. I, give me the under there. I don't think Debo Samuel's going to have any say in this game. I, my whole thing is, I know that they've been using him a little bit of a running back, but they're going to give him an over-under of 40 and a half yards? That's like, that's like a lot of usage. A lot of usage out of the backfield. And I think, for this, chance. I think for this game, you're going to need him out, you know, in wide receiver position. I know he's become this gadget guy. But, you know, Mitchell at 69 and a half, and then you're going to put Samuel at 40 and a half? No way. I think Samuel no. went under on that one. But to your point, I don't see Sony Michel. He's not here. Akers, Samuel, Mitchell, Garoppolo, and Stafford. I really don't like any of the props too much. Now, like I said, they're, they're the ones that I like. I like the OBJ over. I like the Ayuk under. I like Samuel under. And uh, I like the Cooper Cup not getting the longest at 28 and a half. So, but that, those were some I, of my thoughts. Yeah, I, no, I, I, if I was going to go anything, I'd go. What's his name? 
the Van Jefferson, but like to your point, he might not even be healthy enough to go. Yeah, you don't know what what you're going to get out of him. So, um, all right. So with that, let's wrap it up and put our money where our mouth is. So here we go. Fourth down. All right, I'll let you go. I, I made bets last week, um, and I, I once again whiffed. So I don't even know what I've got left of my second uh, $1,000 bankroll. I think it's like a couple hundred bucks. So why don't you go? I, I had a terrible year. You know, I, I, I didn't do anything. I lost my bankroll, repop for another 1000 and, and lost that too. So I just had a terrible year. So why don't you take it away? I think you were still around 3000 or did you drop under it after the last time you put money down? No, I lost all those bets, but I was I was at like three thousand and change, three thousand seventy five or something. Yeah, all right. So take it away. What are you gonna do? All right. So starting with the Kansas City game, I am going to do alternate spreads. So I'm gonna do Kansas City at nine and a half. Okay. Minus nine and a half, which gives you plus one fifteen. I'm gonna do one fifty on that. All right. That pays out 325. But then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna also do an alternate spread on Cincinnati at minus two and a half, winning by a crazy field goal at the end of the game. And that's 50 to win 200. Oh, all right. So you're gonna go both sides on that one. Yeah, like I'm obviously gonna lose one of them, but. The yeah, I think the payoff, should... it, you know, what in regard to the Bengals, you would cover your 150 loss. Right. Correct. So I see what Correct. you're doing. Yep. Okay. All right. So then in the Rams game, I'm going to do an alternate spread with the Rams laying six and a half. And that's 100 to win 250. Six and a half. Wow. The NFL Podcast Nation and all of the experts uh, despise you and think you're a joke. I know. I know. So you're taking the Rams at six and a half, and what are you putting on that? A hundred. And what does that pay out? Two fifty. Okay. It's still just a touchdown win. I I I don't I don't hate it. Right, that's what I mean. It's a touchdown. Yeah. Uh, why, Why wouldn't I? Go if I like the Rams that much, why wouldn't I go hard on it? So then I'm gonna do a hundred dollars parlay Kansas City minus seven, Rams minus three and a half. Yeah, that's that's actually gonna be one of mine as well. And that pays out a hundred to win three seventy five. Yeah, I like that as well because I like the two favorites. You got anything else? Any which, other teasers or anything? Or is that which? No, 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 no. That that's it. I, I'm thinking about. I was contemplating whether to throw a hundred on, like one of the props, but I, you know, I I don't know. I, I there isn't anything that's really popped out to me. Maybe the Kittle. What was the over under on the Kittle? Uh, 52 and a half yards, four and a half receptions, longest of 20 and a half yards. Yeah, so maybe I'll throw 100 on over the, the yardage there. Over the 52? Yeah, over the 52. Because I, I think Kittle's going to be the one that blows up. Yeah, I don't, I, don't know what, I don't know what to make of the San Francisco offense. That's why I stayed away from all those. The only one that I did say that I was leaning toward was Ayuk under the 49 and a half. Because I, you know, he just hasn't had any kind of historical, uh, you know, period here this year in 2021 that I, you know, I would think that he would get more than 50 yards. Um, but that I, I didn't bet that. But yeah, okay. So Kittle at 52 and a half. You're taking the over on that one. Yeah. So that's I. I think that's somewhere around 500 bucks. We'll see how it plays out. Got to save some some money for the Super Bowl. Yeah, I, well, I mean, I'm just picking games at this point because I got nothing left. So uh, I actually did the same thing that you did. I like the Chiefs and the Rams, and my parlay was, my, my parlay and my tease was the same. So with the Chiefs, I took them at seven and a half, Rams at three and a half, and then my tease was the same thing. I like those two teams, so I'll take them, and then, then I'll get the points on top of it. So that'll move the Chiefs down to just a one point favorite, and the Rams are two and a half the other way. That doesn't really make sense because if the Rams lose, they probably lose a close one, and, and the field goal still, you know, busts that uh, 
bust that spread. Uh, that tease, but that's what I ended up doing. And I mentioned the things that I had liked throughout the podcast, but, you know, Cooper Cup, I, I like the under for the longest 28 and a half yard uh, catch. Jamar Chase, I like the over for his yardage at 86 and a half. I like Ayuk under at 49 and a half. OBJ over at 54 and a half. Uh, Mixon, I like the under of 68 and a half. Samuel, I like the under at 40 and a half. Mahomes, I like the over at 20, 285 and a half. Um, you know, again, I'm not betting on any of those, but those are the ones that I mentioned throughout that I kind of like. So, but we're both on the same thing here. It is Chiefs and Rams all day for the Eggy Brothers. You know, and I kind of along with you because you took these alternate spreads. I don't think they're kind of going to be close. I think they're going to be a, a two score games, both of them. And it looks like I lost Chris. So there we go. That's how you uh, crash. And flush out a podcast as we lost. So I was just actually speaking to myself the entire time. So there you go. That's what we got. We've got the 49ers and we have the Rams. That is the Eggy Boy Picks. To all of the rest of you, enjoy. Uh, hope you win out today. And then we will talk after the games. Uh, I will try to do <laughs> some kind of recap. I keep saying that week in and week out, and I never do it. I actually did one game last week, and then it didn't upload, so I screwed the pooch there. Uh, but I will try to do it. And if not, then obviously we will have the gambling podcast, which will be before the Super Bowl. So all the best. Take care. Enjoy Conference Sunday. Conference Sunday.